What's up? What's up? What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? Hey, so uh, I wanted to get on live real quick. Hey, how's everybody doing Sunday morning? I wanted to, uh, I was thinking as I was working out about, hey, guys, um, that there is going to be, what's up, guys? How's everybody doing Sunday? Um, I start your course next week. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yep. Yes. And and so what I wanted to talk about in this video was, is I think there's going to be, I was talking to my wife yesterday and I'm going to start preaching this more. I think there's going to be a hiring surge next year. There's going to be a tech hiring surge next year and the years to follow. Trust me. I repeat, there's going to be a hiring surge next year and the year to follow and, and, and beyond over the next, next year, five years. Here's the deal. Right now, everybody's taking a hit. And I think I talked, touched on this yesterday. I'm going to keep preaching this. Companies are, companies are taking a hit and it's all because of COVID. The hiring tech is, the hiring surge is coming because of COVID. It's going to be the rebound. So here's how, how, here's my thoughts. Companies that were slowly moving into the digital space, let's say they were trying to get in and they really didn't get there fully. And companies that rely on face-to-face -face communication and products and things like that, everyone's taking a hit, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, even 90% destructive. They're being destroyed, okay? Industries are being destroyed. It's sad to see, but this is reality. It's a pandemic, it's things that we're, we're dealing with. What's going to happen these leaders of these companies, these people that, these companies, leaders that have gotten destroyed, their businesses got destroyed and all that stuff, everyone, human instinct is to bounce back and try to be better and try to make, try to survive, right? We have survival instincts. What's going to happen over the next year or two or three, companies and leaders are going to start refocusing on how do we move towards a digital space? How do we now offer more services for delivery? How do we offer more services for online? How do we offer more services over Zoom, live, things like this? How do we do things in a digital environment and less in a face-to-face -face environment? So companies that they're gonna be creative, they're gonna be all this new stuff going on. And what happens over from now, August, over the next, I think, summer of next year, companies are gonna re-strategize. And they're going to be re-strategizing. And what happens is when they start re-strategizing and now they're going to start slowly investing back into these resources or into these new areas of, of tech, that's where they need resources. And that's where designers, developers, product leaders, and things like that come into place. So every if you're in the tech space, you're, you're, we're all take, everyone's taking a hit now because companies aren't hiring. But the next year and the year to follow and the year to follow – companies, industries that haven't even been in, in tech are gonna be moving in tech. And so you're gonna have a huge hiring surge because it's gonna be a huge need for resources um, um, you know, to build out these products. And somebody asked me recently, so what's the main skill, what's the main skill that, um, what's the main skill that I think obviously is, is needed that you can prepare for? Anything in tech, but essentially product leaders, designers, and developers, obviously, right? And the essential skills for designers that I teach, anything, development, remember this. Tech is ran on their develop, the developers, okay? So if you're in development, anything development related, coding, blah, 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 that's, that's an essential skill, okay? So any app is ran on their development organization okay but what else is needed designers and so when you look from when i think about from the ground floor just from the bottom like the very very basic essentials designers developers and product leaders the designers development and product leaders like i said yesterday if i'm in this garage and i need to build a product who do i need i need a designer i need a developer i need a product leader that's it Three people, three people that you need at the essential level to build a product. And I, I'm going to be preaching designers, 
start preparing on what I would do now from now until the end of the year, start preparing and improving your visual UI design skills. And focus on these four areas. Visual UI design, go to Dribbble, go to Pinterest, get inspired and start improving your visual design and designing in a 2020 aesthetic sort of look and feel. 2020, 2021, get on the cutting edge, all right, of dis visual design. Problem, learn, uh, focus on problem solving, habit of critical thinking, and communication. Those things, you will be golden. You, you can fit in any UX environment. You can fit in any product environment if you have those particular skills. The, the latter three, you can grow and build. Obviously, problem solving, there's no test that you need to take to be a great problem solver. You just kind of fine tune and learn more about it and kind of fine tune your process. A habit of critical thinking is just a habit of asking questions and communication. Like I mentioned, those three, product leader, the developer or designer, they, those three need to be able to communicate. Designers, as I'm designing screens and I'm designing mockups and I'm designing prototypes in Figma or in Vision or whatever, I need to be able to communicate my presentations to my stakeholder. And then I need to communicate my presentation to my developers. And then when we're starting in the development process, I need to be able to communicate with the developer in order to make sure that we're developing the right interactions, the right uh, transitions, the right uh, uh, assets right in the product so communication is one of the most essential things in a day-to-day -day development process so um, so that in a nutshell is what needs to take place from now your thinking needs from now until the you know next year and beyond and so if you're in this space just start preparing for it um, obviously I, I, I preach on if you're a developer Friend of developer, or like like development, that's that's cool. I'm more focused on product development. I mean, product design. So um, that's where that's uh, that's my focus. So that's my thoughts. What's up, guys? Happy Sunday. You guys have any questions for me? Any uh, specific questions? Can be on anything. How are you staying on top of the cutting edge design trends? Uh, great question. Um, how, so my, my, my point is building YouTube as a, as a new designer. Um, I'll answer that in a sec. Um, so how am I staying on the cutting edge? So I preach visual design and I'm not a good designer. I'm not a, I would say this, I'm not a great designer. Okay, I had to, I'm the type of person who I kind of, I cut corners a lot and so I just try to get stuff done. And I've never been a very, very, very good visual designer. So my only way to, to get inspired is to visit Dribbble and I, I follow a lot of the top uh, visual designers that are really good on Dribbble. I just look at them and I just get inspired and go like, dang, how can I design like that? And so I just try to chip away. If I look at my designs and I look at their designs and I'm like, my designs look like crap. And I just, I just uh, look at theirs and go, and be honest with yourself be honest and go, you know, companies hire me still because my designs are good, but I don't consider myself a great visual designer. But I know as I can continue to prove and, and continue to copy their stuff and continue to practice, like use, oh, they're using this type of typography. They're using this type of spacing. They're using this type of drop shadows. They're using this type of illustrations. I don't use any of that on my stuff. Oh, they're using pink colors and gradients and stuff like that that's what makes it look good, then I need to move my visual designs towards that aesthetic. And that makes me a better visual designer. And so I just get inspired by being honest, looking at other designers on Dribbble and going, I'm not that good, but I can copy. I can copy, and then as I copy, I get better. I get better. Um, uh, uh, so how do you get better uh, building a YouTube channel? Um, what's my advice building a YouTube channel as a designer? Um, I was gonna create a course on this a while back, and my my um, my essential advice for anybody building a YouTube channel, if I was to look back at when I started a YouTube channel, build a YouTube channel, don't even try to be a, a, a leader. All you're doing for the first, let's say 30 videos that you post, you're just posting, you're just showing people how to do certain things. So if you know how to design and illustrate in Illustrator or, or, uh, or, or Photoshop or, sketch or figma or anything like that all you're doing is i would create how to's i would create like the first 10 videos how to how to uh how to navigate figma as a beginning designer 
and just do a five to seven minute screenshot video of that. Every video to start your YouTube channel should be to help someone. Like the words how to should be in there. How to create gradients in Figma. How to create um, beautiful drop shadows in Sketch, in Figma, in Adobe XD. Whatever tool you're using. Those how-to videos, what you'll see is those are the ones that will be discovered by people across the world as someone searching, how the heck do I do a gradient, right? Your video is going to pop up. Someone's going to click on it and they're going to see it. And then they look and go, wow, this person has 30 more how-to videos. Subscribe, okay? Once you get that, that's how you're going to build 10 subscribers, 50 subscribers, 100 subscribers, 1,000 subscribers. At some point, Along the way, you're then going to shoot a video like this and now you show your face and now they have a brand recognition with these tutorials and now you're off to the races. From that point on, it's just a continuous uploading of these videos and you will become known as, you'll be branded as you. And people will follow you for you and how you present and that's it. You don't have to follow anybody, you don't have to copy anybody else just do your thing. But that essential basic foundation is how anybody builds, um, in my opinion, their personal brand on YouTube. Uh, that's the easiest way to start with how-to videos, to start with how-to videos, um, to start with how-to videos. Because when I look back, I did it indirectly. I didn't know, I didn't know how, I didn't know I was doing this. But when I first got started in YouTube, I was trying to do a lot of how-to videos because I thought that was the stuff that I could put on a blog, right? Because back when I got started, 2010, was when blogs were still existing. So I thought how to design a logo, how to build a website, how to do this. And then if I look back now, though I changed it and now you see a lot of me just talking and giving inspiration because I moved on from just tutorials. Those are my most visited videos. Those are my most visited videos. Like if I ever wanted to grow my channel to like 500,000 subscribers, a million subscribers, it would have to be more like tutorial base, like that type of stuff, like hardcore hard skills, because that hard skills, like tutorial based tutorials, you would, you, it is, everyone loves those type of tutorials. They, those are the most searched those are the most visited tutorial because they solve someone's problem like right away and and so forth. And people subscribe to those channels because they want to see more tutorial things like that. So, um, so yeah, so that's how I would do it. Uh, Mike, what are your thoughts on designing on WordPress and a tool like Elementor? Um, uh, I think it's good. Um, designing in WordPress, I, I started my career in WordPress. I used to... I used to have a lot of tutorials on WordPress too. I moved on from it since, but um, uh, I'm an old school. I'm an old school WordPress, like customizer. Like I, 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 I used to have a lot of plugins, a lot of like, like a lot of like. I used to, I used to grind within WordPress. Um, I moved on from it because it wasn't my essential. It wasn't my essential thing. But um, if you if you grind in WordPress, it's good. If you grind in uh, Elementor, like a tool like that, that allows you to, to, to build and let's say build a side business where you're, you're, I think Elementor is like a tool that allows you to like, it's like WordPress or like Word Upload, but for, for, um, WordPress allows you to build stuff easily. Um, I think it's great for business purposes. Um, I don't know in my, in my line of work, and this is just 100% real in my line of work, like as a product designer, Companies don't need that particular skill. They don't need me. Even I remember this early on. I was working at Fox one day and my I was an expert in my opinion at WordPress and I was getting paid as a UX designer at Fox. And my director one day, he asked me, he came to my desk. Mind you, I was working in WordPress for like five years prior to that, like grinding within WordPress. He, he asked me, hey, Mike, have you heard of WordPress? Like it blew my mind like, this guy doesn't even know, doesn't even know I knew WordPress. Like obviously common sense will tell you 
there's obviously not a need for it because he never knew I even knew WordPress or I never asked me for it. But so that that shocked me. And um, and so I was just like, I guess people don't need WordPress in these corporations. You know, they just need you to design and work with developers and stuff like that. Um, yeah, if you post uh, articles on LinkedIn, definitely everything. Take the take, you know, like 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 the um, like the uh, the Gary V approach. Gary V says any any platform like like YouTube, like Instagram, YouTube, anything that allows you to get out there, take advantage of it. So if you're posting articles on LinkedIn and that's your thing, if you're posting articles on on Medium and that's your thing, that's good. There's nothing that will not benefit you. Uh, we all, everybody who posts stuff on, 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 on uh, social medias and stuff like that, obviously we all have room to grow because I could be using, I could be utilizing Facebook lives. I could be utilizing this, 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 this. So the question is, and, and Gary Vee actually has a, 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 a video on this. He says, the answer is yes. Yes to everything. Yes to posting on Medium. Yes to posting on LinkedIn. Yes to starting a YouTube channel. Yes to doing uh, Instagram. Yes to building your personal brand. Yes to this, 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 this. Yes, Twitter. And how to grow on Twitter. I, I'm not an expert on that. I'm still just learning. I'm just, I'm 10 years deep into doing like social media stuff and I'm just now starting to do lives. So there's no right and wrong on how you grow. I'm just, so it's it's like, you just, you just grind. Um, thoughts on learning HTML, CSS as a product designer? Um, Again, a very great essential skill for yourself. It may not be needed at, at, as a product designer day to day for working for a company. So understand that. Like I know WordPress, I love WordPress. And when I dive into WordPress, when I spend an hour or two in WordPress, I love it. And I'm like, this tool is so powerful. It's so amazing. It allows me to do build an app, to build the front end, to build a responsive site in right, without coding, I love it so much. And then I think, am I? I don't use it day to day as a product designer. They're paying me, you know, a lot of money as a product designer, and they don't ask for me to know Webflow. So you, it's like common sense. Like I go, I love it. How could I use it? How could I utilize it in my in making money and day to day? It has to be more on a personal level, like building your building your own products like if i like i one day i want to build a SaaS product okay i want to build a SaaS product and i know it's going to take it's going to cost me like 30 to fifty thousand dollars probably to get a developer on board to really build this out over a year right like as he works on as he or she works on the side i'm going to do the front end and i'm going to have to at least know how to build it out if i want to save money i'm going to have to know how to develop the, the, built these apps, the interfaces, and hand this code over to this developer. And so, in that aspect, I would, uh, you know, Webflow would be essential to my growth in that aspect. How much could you expect to earn after 10 years in the UX? Good, great question. Um, everybody's different. Obviously, in California, you'll be learning, you'll be earning well over $100,000 in, in the UX space. You should be. Um, if, so if, if you're over 10 years in the UX and you're in California, anywhere in LA, upwards to uh, uh, San Francisco or Seattle, you should be anywhere from 100 to 120 to 130, et cetera, okay? And so obviously as you get older, 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 and you're grinding, um, your, your earning potential grows and so you know, right now you'll see sometimes senior designer, blah, 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 you know, 130, 120, you know. Uh, everyone caps off as a product designer around the 150-ish mark, your high end 160 for principal, then you have to go to a director levels to get between 160 to 200K, you know, so. Um, but I, I know people, obviously, if you're living in different parts of this United States, or like in big cities like New York, Orlando, I think, but different states with, with lower taxes, obviously your, your salary level is low. Um, but uh, so some people are making 35,000, 40,000 to start. 20. When I started years ago, 
I was making 21000 but that was just me, you know, whatever. That was just part of my life. That was, a, that was money that I, that was okay for me back then, you know, so it's all relative, but I think over 100000 um, over 10 years, obviously. Um, let me see, any more questions? Page builder, very robust, yep. WordPress or Webflow? Uh, great question. WordPress is probably more, has a lot more features and plugins and like, stuff like that, and a lot, it's, it's a lot more robust. But I'm a Webflow fan because it allows you to get in and really, it, it's built in a different way. They all do the same stuff, but I'm more Webflow. If I had to choose if Webflow or, or, or WordPress, I'm choosing Webflow. Um, just because it's just more fun. I spent years in WordPress and it's so crazy, so big, but whatever. But WordPress, um, Word, Webflow to me feels like I can just start easily with the pick, with the div and just build, adjust it with the parameters and just go from there. It's like I'm really taking a, a mock-up in, in, in my sketch or whatever and just kind of slowly paint, painting it over in Webflow. Webflow just gives you that full control. And uh, I don't know, I just love Webflow. I appreciate everybody chiming in. You're welcome, you're welcome. I appreciate everybody uh, for, you know, watching my content and stuff like that. Um, one question, one more question, let me see. I learned one more from your videos from Brooke. <laughs> terrible to leave. So, uh, so would it be terrible to leave the boot camp? So, here's the deal. So, so that's a good question, and I wanted to the boot camp certification. So, okay. So the question was the initial question was uh, you learn more from online stuff. Let's say people like me are just going online, you're finding little nuggets and you're now, someone like me, you might find someone on YouTube and you might find someone like me that kind of shares a little bit more insight that something where you're not being taught in, in a boot camp. Because what happens is in boot camps, they try to stick to a, a more textbook approach. And uh, so nothing, the stuff you're learning in boot camps is not terrible. Is just that is sometimes they don't get into the more informal discussions like I'm doing here. I'm telling you real, like I'm keeping it real, like 100% real. And so you're going to learn more from someone like me. But the boot camps aren't bad. If you actually, if you actually, and, and also the boot camps aren't bad for you. They might be a waste of money at some point. At the end, you're like, why the hell did I spend 5000 or 12000 or 4000 or this and that? Listen, I will never tell somebody to not go to school. Being structured, being going into boot camp, whatever. But someone like me, I was able to learn on my own. So once I figured out that, hey, I could spend a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday, like we're doing now, and we're, we're, actually, we're actually, you're learning just like practical advice, and you're like, this person has 20 years experience in doing this. And they're saying, these are the three things that I should be work focused on. And then when you start working on them, you realize like, that person's right. Like, why the hell am I learning customer journey? Or why am I learning this in, in school? Or why am I learning this, this, this? Then you realize, like, that's why I do what I do. Because I know there is a opportunity to speak more truth and more just basic foundational stuff, like essential stuff, um, and all that stuff. But here's the thing. If you spend any type of money to do your boot camp, finish it out while you're still doing other stuff. The certification isn't going to get you a job, but it's not, it's only, it's, it is only going to help you. As I mentioned, if you're just now getting started in UX and on your resume, you said, hey, completed an eight week boot camp at General Assembly or this and blah, blah, blah. To me, as someone, psychologically, think about it. It sounds good, right? It sounds good. So if you actually really did it, it only will help you. The only 
downfall is if you spent four thousand twelve thousand could you navigate through your career without having to go in debt in in that aspect the answer is yes there is an opportunity to do that but i'm not i won't knock anybody for paying for education bear for higher learning that's on you and you're gonna have to learn but uh if you if if you if if i wouldn't tell you to stop but if you if you have a, a, a if you have a decision to say hey can i can i can i be successful the question to for Mike is, hey, Mike, can I be successful if I paused my boot camp and not continue to pay and continue to learn on my own? The answer is yes. You can do that. Definitely, 100%. Should you invest in UX-related books? And which ones? Uh, yes, the only book that I recommend, the only one I recommend right now that I only know of, that I've only read is uh, Don't Make Me Think by Stephen Krug, the visited version. You appreciate it for that. Uh, um, yeah, you could, you could, you could uh, transition into UX at 47. Yeah, this is a new age. We're all, I'm 45. Um, you know, uh, this is a new age. More people are gonna be 50 whatever if you can design if you can stay like mindset if you can like stay focused it's not getting a job the only difference the only thing about the only thing about being older in the ux is that as naturally as you get older you want to make more money okay so paying someone of, of someone who's 45 50 years old they're gonna want to make over 100k easy they're gonna want to make over 100k right because they have a family they have a house they have this but a 21 year old a 19 a 23 year old they're good with 35,000 because they're living at home with moms they're living at home you know with, with, with whatever so a company that's a challenge that's a challenge for all anybody as you get older you want more money but if you can if you can uh, if you're okay with making 35,000 and your lifestyle is built around 25,000, 35,000, 45,000, 55,000. Now you're in the game. And all it is is about you showing your skills and you being on top of your game in terms of like knowing how to problem solve and knowing what the essentials are. You're there to help, you know, be an asset, help a company grow, design, work with developers, work with product owners, work with uh, stakeholders and deliver great products. If you don't have a, a salary concern, you're in the game. We're all in the game. Those of us like myself, uh, we, we started in the game and we, we built from the ground up. We, you know, we, we're, we're, we're now in our 40s and, and that's just the nature of the business because we started when the internet started. How do I stay fresh? Uh, how, do you stay, how do you stay fresh at your UX and UI skills or knowledge? Uh, one is really just... Um, staying developing products and and working in 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 as you work in these environments uh you start to realize what's essential to a company and once you when you start working if you're working you just stay fresh and you're looking out there and you're seeing and you're just trying to improve and grow but when you work for companies um you uh you realize what is essential what's not So my old course, my old course, uh, so I, I built two courses so far. What my first course in 2012 obviously is not, it has some principles that exist today that's real, really good. My, lat, my current course that I have right now is built in 2000. I did it at the end of 2017, 2018. And it is a course that is 100% essential to everything you do today. The designs are a little bit slightly Tinsy Bincy outdated, but I'm going, I'm working on a new course for 20 for the end of this year or for the next month or so. A new course that were it's gonna be updated designs, but also done in Figma because I want to teach people Figma because Figma is a, is also growing and it's also essential for anybody on PC and 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 uh, and Mac. And also, I want to teach on just the essentials of visual design. It's really going to be a visual UI design course that teaches on problem solving, crit critical thinking, and um, 
and communication. So that's gonna be the focus, but it's gonna be a focus. It's gonna be a newer course with more, I would say more 2021 aesthetics, 2020 aesthetics and stuff like that. But everything that I talk about in all my courses, I go back and look up some of my stuff from 20, 20, from, from my old program from, 20, from 2012 and I'm like, damn, those things are still relevant today, 100%. Like job websites are filled with only senior product designers. Rose, is it okay to apply to senior design role? Yeah, so great, great question. Um, apply to senior roles. Apply to senior roles, but don't call, don't call yourself junior. I see a lot of us doing that. A lot of people doing that because we we uh, we um, we we feel we're junior and we're honest with ourselves and we don't want to be like coming off as like trying to be senior and stuff like that, but don't call yourself junior. You're just a UX designer. Okay. And you could have a month worth of skills, six months worth of skills, a year worth of skills. Don't worry about that. Don't call yourself. Don't put the label junior on it. It's, it's like, you're basically apologizing for being fresh and being new. That's okay. Just say UX designer. And now you're applying for these roles. Do that, do that. Don't, don't, don't give yourself junior. Don't call yourself junior. Uh, let me see. What look for with designers with no job experience. Um, what they look for, they look for, for, for. What do they look? What do, what do, uh, what do companies look for? The question was, what do employers look for with a designer? with no job experience. I think the three things, or the four things, focus on this, visual UI design. Can you design? All right, that's something that we all have to work on every single day, every single night. Your, your portfolio needs to go like, dang, this person can design, right? Three, or two, talk about how you are growing in your problem solving process. That's important to a leader. And talk about that. So a problem solving process, number one, finding the root. Um, uh, coming up with possible brainstorming possible solutions, testing it, and then, um, wait, no. Finding the root, discovering the root, brainstorming possible solutions, implementing it, and then testing it to see if it's working, right? And then three, a habit of critical thinking. Four, communication. That's important to any designer, to any employer. Let me see, one more question. One more question, then I'm gonna upload this video. I'll do, I'm gonna do a lot more um, lives. Um, I'm gonna try to save this one on my Instagram um, so you guys can check back later if you wanted to refollow these answers. But how do you handle corporate politics as a UX designer? Great question. Um, just like you would handle politics in any, or in any uh, industry, any organization, these things are part of the game. And so um, you can't stop politics and stuff like that. The way I navigate it is go out there and get your money. Go out there and secure your bag. Who says that? Um, DJ Khaled says that. Go out there and secure your bag. So if there's politics going on, are you still getting a check? Politics going on, you're still getting a check? Politics going on, are you still getting a check? Don't mind them. Secure your money and move on. Keep it moving. If it's affecting you that much, that means you care. I've been there a million times. That if it's affecting you, if the politics are, is affecting you day to day, that means you care. And that's actually a good thing. I've been there several times um, where I'm like, I come home, I'm like, babe, I'm quitting. I'm quitting. I'm like, I'm not, I don't, you know, because there's politics. VP didn't like me. Me and the VP were kind of like messing up. And a message, somebody said, you care too much. Stop caring. Just collect your check and move on. And so what happens is they're absolutely right. What I do is I collect my check, secure your bag, and you slowly but surely have one foot out the door and you're out, you're looking for other opportunities because when you go to other opportunities you learn new things you meet new people you work on new projects and those politics aren't initially there for the first six months to a year politics eventually comes 
but it's not there initially. When you're in a toxic place, I've been there several times, it's horrible. I don't, you don't wanna be there. But my advice to you as a friend, I would say, secure your bag. If we're sitting at Starbucks right now and you're telling me this, there's politics, man, I don't like my job, I hate it, it's, I'm arguing with this person, it's they're messing me up, they're demoted me and all that stuff, make your money, okay? Let's keep it real. Make your money. Make your money while you grind on the side. I'll talk about that more. I'll be preaching that forever. Secure your bag, make your money, and continue to, on the surface, you're building your portfolio, you're updating your resume, you're on LinkedIn, and you're just like reaching out to new jobs, and you're grinding. And eventually, you're going to find that new gig, and you're going to move on, and, uh, and uh, you're going to be good. I appreciate that for taking my course. Hey, more to come. Hey, hey guys, I'm, I'm gonna end it, but I appreciate you guys for chiming in. I'm gonna upload this on, on my Instagram. You can check check back and, and rewatch some of these questions later. Um, but uh, I really appreciate it. I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna do more lives. I'll probably do a YouTube live later today. Upload on YouTube. I'm gonna do a YouTube live on Tuesday. And I'm looking for my first virtual meetup on Thursday, which I'll be inviting everybody. It's a free virtual meetup. I need to build the landing page where people can sign up and uh, you'll be sent a Zoom link, or you'll be sent a link to the Zoom meeting, and um, you will, will, I'll be talking about it more over the next several days, promoting it more, so if you're on my any of my social media, you'll definitely see the promotion for that, um, but it's gonna be a free virtual meetup. Just think like, hey, coming in, ask me questions, and we just vibe like this, all right? Thanks, guys, have a, happy Sunday, and uh, be blessed, all right? Peace.